G'day, uh, this is a presentation slash video on discursive writing and specifically it is an introduction to discursive writing and how we look at it in uh, for New South Wales education. So, what is discursive writing? First of all, uh, discursive writing was introduced with the new HSC curriculum. So, it's been added to the types of text which you need to know how to write. Uh, of course, the four types of text are imaginative, persuasive, informative, and now discursive. Specifically, it is a piece of writing where you explore a concept or theme in an unbiased manner. So, what does it look like? Uh, rather than engaging directly with the question prompt stimulus, you identify a concept, theme, or idea which relates to the question prompt stimulus, and you discuss that related theme or idea or concept. Now, given that discursive is a normalization of the word discuss, uh, obviously for your concept, theme, or idea, you will need at least two points which show different sides of that concept, theme, or idea. They don't necessarily have to be for and against, and as far as Nessa is concerned, it's probably better if it's not for and against, right? They need to show multiple or different perspectives. So this example was from last year's assessment task, last year's exam slash test with reference to your stimulus and other texts that you have studied this term compose a discursive piece of writing that explores the representation of gender in media so rather than taking this question and engaging directly with it we see that the main concept that they want you to, to talk about representation of gender in media so you take a theme or concept that's related to that part the representation of gender in media and you discuss that all right so you know one concept might be feminism or patriarchy slash matriarchy all right or you know puberty or whatever and then you discuss that concept slash idea now for the part which is probably going to cause the most stress for a lot of you is the structure of a discursive piece of writing long and short of how to structure discursive text is there is no set structure right the structure the text type etc is entirely up to you so for a discursive piece if you want to write a poem write a poem if you want to write a story write a story if you want to write it as an essay write it as an essay if you want to write it as a, a blog post a listicle a you know, journal entry diary entry newspaper article uh you could probably write down a choreograph for an interpretive dance. Do it. It doesn't really matter in terms of structure for discursive writing. Alright, so what matters instead of structure? Because for discursive writing, as I said, with all those different text types that you can write for it, students do write all of those different text types for it so we need to be able to mark them equitably across the different text types that students provide so instead of a specific structure you need to make sure that you're doing these things 
Firstly, that you are merely presenting arguments or points as facts, right? You're not trying to persuade anyone to believe them. You're just putting them there. You're just stating this is what it is. Secondly, you need to be able to support your points with examples and evidence. All right. Now, what you use for examples and evidence is entirely up to you. They can come from the text, such as the movie that we've studied, such as the advertisements that we've looked at. They can come from your personal life. They can come from media in general, like just what you happen to have seen on the news or the funny meme you saw the other day about uh, equality, e equal work pay or whatever, right? Your examples and your evidence don't even need to exist. You can make them up. Point. So essentially, it doesn't matter what your examples and evidence are as long as they are relevant to your point and as long as they are presented in an unbiased manner. This third one is the most important thing for a discursive voice. You need to establish a distinctive narration voice, right? a distinct narrative voice. The stronger the voice of your nar of your narrator are, or your persona if you're doing poetry, <clears throat> the stronger that voice is, the better you're going to do. And I'll go into later in our next few lessons uh, over the next you know two three weeks whatever we have until your assessment task, uh, looking at establishing that distinct narration voice that distinctive narration voice second in terms of importance to the distinctive narration voice the distinct narr narrative voice is that you shift in focus and your voice should follow that so as I said before you need to present multiple perspectives to the of the concept slash theme slash idea right you need to make sure that your narrative voice reflects that shift in focus all right so if we're talking about importance of you know patriarchy you might look at for you know example how well one society has done under a patriarchy and then you might shift to all of the bad and negative things that occur in that society because of the patriarchy, right? And then your shift in focus, your narrative voice needs to reflect that. So even though it's meant to be unbiased, there needs to be a clear shift. 